Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome once again to my house uh, because we on day 61 um, of lockdown and South Africa just heard that we will be going into level three. So I think there is a lot of excitement around within the country and also a lot of uncertainty because people don't know exactly what does level three entail and what are we allowed to do um, going forward but at least we are moving in the right direction. So for everyone once again joining in, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure when you know that, that people out there are listening as well as to all of my existing clients. Uh, welcome back. Uh, just put quickly on, on a point from here on forward, you will see that we, we took a nice two week break and, and from here on going forward, these live sessions will only be once a month. So please uh, send me your emails, send me your WhatsApps, so that we can have specific topics that you would want us to focus on in the future. Um, so yeah, let's get into today's topic, uh, short-term insurance. Now, why did I decide to choose this topic? I thought in uncertain times like these and where people are busy re-evaluating their whole portfolios, um, it would be a nice a nice uh, topic to, to get a short-term expert in to quickly come and have a discussion around all the little things that we need to, to look out for uh, when we're entering into a short-term policy. Um, I also want to emphasize that, that we at Harbour Wealth, we do not give advice on short-term insurance. That's why we partner with certain external independent um, advisors and brokers out there who will be able to advise you um, on your short term, and therefore I decided to get Carl Karen from KIS Insurance in today. Uh, now, before I add Carl to, to the screen, uh, I just quickly want to give you a short little snippet um, of his uh, background. Uh, and I always laugh and I say, whenever you ask someone for their CV, you tend to see certain things that you didn't know of them as well, uh, where Carl uh, is an expert in energy as well and an artificial intelligence um, optimization and simulation. So um, Carl is the, the managing director of uh, KIS Insurance and he's been uh, in the industry for over 16 years where he's focused and been, been with uh, KIS Insurance and focusing on short-term insurance as well as he's got 12 years of in-depth auditing uh, because he holds a BCom accounting degree, uh, five years of experience in integrated electricity planning and, and demand side management um, and then like I said the engineering of artificial intelligence. Um, he's also a lecturer at, at UNISA so maybe there's some of his students currently uh, listening to him so Carl there's no pressure on you uh, so therefore um, I would like to to say let me just quickly do that there we go welcome Carl thanks for joining morning, us. Guys. morning everyone um, well, like I, I said, you. It's nice speaking to you, everyone. Brilliant, awesome stuff, Carl. Um, I think, like I've just mentioned to everyone, um, and I'm going to get right into the questions and put you on the spot uh, because I think it's important. Uh, like I said, in these times, uh, people need to understand what's going on in their short-term insurance uh, before they just quickly go online um, and try and get a cheaper quote. Uh, or do quote hopping from different brokers from the one to the other um, instead of just trying to save costs. I think it's important um, that you will will tell them more about what you need to, uh, they need to look out for today, especially when they look into their short term insurance. So the first question I've got for you is what are the different types of insurances uh, that, that one gets, especially when you focus on short term insurance? Um, and how do they differ? Because I think most of the people know the car, the, the household, and maybe business insurance, but there's a lot of other short-term insurance, um, types of short-term insurance that you get. So, so please, yeah. really tell us more about that. Well, okay, yes, as I said, you know, to start off, um, we, uh, as a company, focus on uh, short-term insurance, um, mainly. And if I say short-term insurance, uh, let's start off with, uh, say, 80% of our business uh, is about commercial insurance. 
then we also do the 20% individuals or senior individuals or uh, directors or uh, people, their personal line insurances within those businesses. So that's the, the first difference. It's commercial insurance and then the individual's insurance, the personal, personal lines insurance. And then over and above that, you get many other uh, different uh, short-term insurance products like marine insurance, where, you, where people import products from China to South Africa, the, the cover of, the, uh, of, of those items uh, abroad uh, with a plane or by ship, uh, we deal with that. Uh, we also do professional indemnity, for instance. Professional indemnity is where an individual uh, or a firm uh, does professional work and give professional advice and then uh, when claims arise as a result of uh, perhaps uh, wrong advice or uh, something like that. Uh, we also do cyber insurance which covers the, the latest uh, hacking of um, databases, um, personal information, um, uh, financial accounts, bank accounts, and so forth. Um, we also do contractors all risk, uh, plant all risk, contractors all risk is where you have large uh, developments. We uh, That's a different kind of insurance. Once that uh, uh, building has been completed, then it moves on to either the commercial insurance or your personal alliance insurance. So, yes, we have um, marine, as I said, broad form public liability, which includes product liability. For instance, where you have a, uh, a business that uh, produces products, um, or manufacturing products, uh, then broad form public liability covers that. Um, we do a lot of body corporates and large commercial buildings. We know the Body Corporate Act uh, and inside out. I mean, that's so important. Mm -hmm. And by saying all of this, I mean, uh, what we've uh, noticed in the last couple of years is that uh, insurers don't uh, advise on any of those products any longer. They mm -hmm. Uh, move that advice away from them to uh, us as uh, independent specialists. So we have to have we have to be specialists in all those products. We have we do specialized training all of our staff, all of our offices, and um, therefore I can say with. Uh, with quite confidence that, uh, you know, to deal, and, and we have a direct uh, dealing with clients. We, when, when a client wants to come and see us, or wants to, wants to have, uh, wants to be insured, we do have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationship. So we go out to premises, we look at the premises, we assess the risk, and so forth. So that's that's pretty important, which is unlike with the online or uh, direct uh, insurers. Now, Carl, if I can come in there, just uh, I think it's it's very very important from what I've heard as well now, uh, because I mean you've already mentioned one or two things that that I wasn't aware of. You've heard of it, but you're not always focusing on. Am I? Is that part of my policy? Is that something that I should have? And I think it's very important specifically for all my younger clients uh, from yeah. the, the short five, six minutes that you've just heard. <laughs> short term insurance is not something that you just once you've decided, OK, this is the car that I want to buy or this is the house that I want to buy. Now, all of a sudden, I need to phone someone or go online um, and quickly get a quote so that I can just get my car out. Or when you start a business. Um, it's not just something that you quickly put in place because otherwise you might not have 
XYZ licenses. Um, it's very important uh, to contact someone like Carl and his team to have a one-on-one -on -one session and sit down and make sure uh, that they actually can ask you the, all the questions um, and, and you will be able to, to then put a policy in place where you won't have any nasty surprises uh, come claim stage. Uh, or what I wanted to ask you, Carl, is that cybersecurity, is that only on commercial or can an individual also you, you, you um, can, have that you, in place? You can, you can also get cyber cover for your individuals as well. You can add it to, your, to the individual's policy as well. So yeah, cyber cover is, is, is available to the individuals as well now. Yeah, and I reckon you guys are also extremely busy at this moment with everyone bringing in masks uh, from all over yeah. all over the place and starting yeah. different mask making companies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all right. Um, Carl, let's let's quickly think about, um, and I think as we go along and as we go into these questions, a lot I think is going to be reiterated or we're going to ask it again or mention it again. But what are the most key important things to consider when I take out short-term insurance? Um, and maybe to make it easier is, let's say if we focus on, on car insurance and then you can elaborate on that. Well, uh, Wilco, there's there's so many things to to take into account. But firstly, to to start off saying that uh, we we representing about twenty different insurers, from um, the local insurers like Santom to Allianz. So our clients have quite a variety of of products and. Uh, and 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 rates and specialist products available to their um, advantage. That's the one thing. the The other thing is that you, when you when you look at insurance, it's important to 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 uh, first to look at the risk. Um, where are your uh, your main risks um, like uh, vehicles? If you look at the statistics. 75% of all vehicles on our South African roads are not comprehensively insured. So, you know, if, if someone runs into your vehicle uh, and he's not insured, then obviously you're gonna, you're gonna have to claim from your own insurance or your claim or your own insurance doesn't have a recourse where they can claim from. So that's critically important, you know, to look at those things that i mean if 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 you lose a car of whatever amount uh, and they're not cheap lately um that's the one thing the other thing is a complete loss like a house a structure uh it could burn down uh, the content could be destroyed i mean that kind of loss no one in in in, in anyone's lifetime can can afford not being insured. So yeah, that that would be the two things that I would really uh, start off with. And if you add on to that, then you can add, for instance, public liability. Um, public liability in the sense that your um, your uh, your dog runs out when you open the gate and it and it and it uh, bites uh, or you know, someone in the street and you've got claims against you, that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and then obviously the other things come with that, uh, like the Aorist, the jewelry, the laptops, the iPads and, and so forth. Um, and and in, 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 uh, in our business, we have also developed certain um, um, personal line products where you get a certain percentage of your know, household content value on an all risk basis and, and, and all risk means the most comprehensive form of cover worldwide um, mm, okay. so you get that uh, say 30 percent of your household content for free uh, so you never have to specify anything any longer. It's, there, there are normally limits to the individual items. 
the limit that I can remember of one of the insurers, and they they all vary, is about fifty thousand per per item. So you can you you can see it's quite substantial, and and it's a nice product to have. And and and, and it's I just for, wanted to ask you is what is there is there a specific uh, let's take the, the all risk, but when I specify it, is there a specific limit or not a limit on the upside, but actually on the downside for clients to go like, you know what, maybe this is something that's worth insuring on its own. Uh, maybe it falls within that 30%. Is there a specific limit there? Um, you, uh, I'm not 100% sure whether I understand your question. So let's say I'm, I've got a bicycle or I've just bought a new watch. Now, yeah. the watch is only worth, I bought it for 3,000 Rand. So the question actually is, where does it, where should I draw the line? Or is it once again from person to person when look they at, need to specify something? Look, it's uh, per item, is, it, it, it's covered for replacement value. Mm. Uh, so you have to take that into account, obviously. But um, as I said, I mean, you 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 have um, when you have this 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 all risk uh, linked to your household content, you have a, a thirty percent of your household content. Say your household content is um, a million rand, then obviously yeah. you have you have per incident uh, up to three hundred thousand that you can claim. Uh, limited, obviously, uh, per item yeah. value. The item value, as I said, the one that I can remember is 50,000, but it varies from insurer to insurer. But, I mean, that's that's a pretty uh, substantial amount that, you, yeah, you know. Say, that is an amazing product uh, for everyone uh, watching this now and later as well. That is That's really an amazing add-on that Carl and his company has. Uh, because if you go and look at some of the other insurers where you have to specify each individual item, um, your premium can quickly run away with you. Um, and, and also on the household content, when Carl mentioned a million now, back in the day when I used to thumb suck and think, okay, this is what it's valued at. Um, and we sat down actually with Carl and his team and they said, hold on, um, if you really have to go, and, and I challenge everyone out there as well, to go into your complete house and go from the tiniest spoon that you've got uh, to the sock uh, that doesn't have a partner anymore in your cupboard. And if all of that had to be replaced tomorrow morning, I think you will be surprised to see uh, uh, to what an amount that will actually accrue to. Uh, yeah, well, it's so the replacement value of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, Carl, so let's move into the next one. So uh, like most individuals um, that that are uneducated when it comes to short-term insurance. Now I've decided I want to buy a car and I want to quickly hop online. Or it's tough times, I want to save on my premium. I hop online and there's, there's multiple platforms where one can actually get quotes mm -hmm. from. What are the one or two things that you would say people need to look out for instead of just paying a lower premium? Well, the important thing is is the the fine print. Um, uh, some, well, one specific large uh, insurer uh, does underwriting at time of claims. So you know, unlike the other traditional insurers that. Uh, finalize the under an um, underwriting when you actually sign on and 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 get your insurance they do it only at claim when the claim uh, um, starts and yeah. that could be two three five years from there and then the first thing that the assessor would be asked for is go and check the the old claims ratio or claims of the of of this person, whether he actually declared all these claims before. Mm. Um, the traditional insurers, and if I say the traditional insurers, I mean the the you know the 
the guys, the, uh, the good and proper, <laughs> if you know who the good and proper is, and, and, and some of their, some of their, uh, um, um, uh, at this, you know, they, they are, they do the underwriting when, when they, when the policy is written, they make sure yeah. that they're happy with your risk. Uh, you can sleep well at night. You wouldn't have to worry about that. Everything that you've got in your policy is actually covered. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the one thing. The um, the other thing is that uh, you get with these uh, call centers, you get a situation where certain questions is asked by people that are, aren't really specialists in in the field they uh, they might still be in training or they uh, um, or they they they're not really always uh, specialist or uh, that profession they might have a list of questions to ask you and that's that there's there's that really a lot they, of ask, they ask that to you and you just answer that and they do that as quick as possible and you don't even have time to think so you yeah. answer that at at you think your best, and then uh, when a claim uh, occurs, then they go back to those answers, and they might repudiate your claim as a result of uncertainty or as a result of something that you said. You 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 might say, oh, you know, I don't think I. Uh, someone else will drive this vehicle. It, I I, I, it should only be myself. Yeah. And uh, in fact, your wife also drives that vehicle from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, the allocated driver of that vehicle, where the traditional insurers won't really care about that. They 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 don't really care about, who they, they do ask you who the uh, regular driver would be, but they wouldn't really um, hold you to that, uh, mm. under that. Um, not that I'm saying that there's, there's gray areas, but I mean the, 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 the direct insurers might get away sometimes uh, with things like that, you know. Um, things like um, uh, excess, yeah. excess I, I think something that comes up to mind as well is, is maybe excess where, where you will quickly get a cheaper premium maybe online but then yeah. you're not aware of the 5 or the 10 or the 15,000 rand or the percentage that you have to pay on top of when you want to claim absolutely you know they could, they could we, we, we uh, quite often find individual policies with these massive um, uh, excesses, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the guy's excited, he wants his car, you know, he's in a hurry, he sits at the dealer and he, and, and he try and, and, and answer the questions as quick as possible. And when they say an excess of 10,000 or 5,000 Rand, uh, or 10% of, of the value of, of the vehicle or whatever the case might be, he doesn't even do those calculations. Uh, he just wants his car, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, with us, it's different. You know, it's a one-on-one -on -one with the client. And I mean, uh, you know, you absolutely look at all the details. You explain to the clients, each and every section and the and the implication of each and every section and they also have um, uh, what you call um, clauses in each and every section which you need to discuss with the client i mean he needs yeah. to know exactly what they entail um, for instance you know a, a typical example is um, if if you have to specify, if you have a policy where you actually specify your all risk and the value of one uh, particular jewelry is more than 10,000 rand, it has to be locked in, into, a, into a, 
uh, a safe at your home whilst you're not wearing it. Yeah. So not all people knows about these kind of things. And and, and um, to be quite honest, you know, you 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 have to. What we do is, is we spend a lot of time working through all those extensions and exemptions um, on the policy whilst we're sitting with the client. And, um, you know, it's not a rushed um, exercise. Okay. Yeah. Welcome. And, then, and what's just the, the whole time as you keep on speaking and as we're going through this, the, the one thing that keeps on standing out for me is the needs to know in, can deal with a lot of uh, companies out there. Yeah. So therefore, as we always say with, with life insurance, um, these are not decisions that you take hasty. You don't just go into it because, like Carl said, you want the car. I think it's very, very important as you start looking into buying a new car, buying a new property, starting up your business, please go and sit with them because they will be able to tell you about all of these different clauses um, that you need to be aware of. Because I think the one thing that frustrates me the most is to be paying for someone something, thinking that I've got a claim, and then at claim stage, you realize that X, Y, and Z uh, is not going to pay out. So therefore, rather from the outset, know that, you know what, if I take this policy, it's, uh, for instance, and then please, this is just me talking out loud, it's not going to cover me if I um, have a small scratch. Or going into it, I know that if I take this route, I will have pothole cover, but if I decide that route, I won't have it. So that you have really have a clear view um, of what you are going into. Carl, I just have uh, one or two, a uh, few questions uh, from my side. Um, if there's anyone out there that would like to send me a WhatsApp email uh, or afterwards, please, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Carl, uh, send me an email uh, or go onto their website. It's kareninsurance.co.za and go and have a look at what they are about, get in contact. Uh, that I must talk from a personal experience because uh, our personal stuff is, is all with Carl and his team and, and I can really vouch for them that, that the service that we get and the advice that we get is 100% is in line uh, with our needs. Um, Carl, just quickly, um, and maybe a stupid question, but just how does my age and at what age uh, does my premiums start getting cheaper or how does my age have an impact yeah. on the premium we pay? Well, well Co, yes, uh, age plays a very important role um, uh, when it comes to short-term insurance, especially if you look at um, um, youngsters that buys um, uh, sporty vehicles and stuff like that, then obviously, you know, the age and the fact that it's a, that it's a, a, a sporty vehicle um, uh, push up the rate. But uh, as, again, as I said, you know, once you 25 and older, you tend to become more uh, or less of a risk. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, that's the, that's the word. And then, uh, obviously, if if you have uh, a professional qualification, uh, you also tend to be, uh, according to the stats, uh, uh, be more responsible. Um, mm. uh, whether it's true or not, you know, <laughs> we, we yeah. <laughs> That's debatable, but we uh, we look at we look at so many variables. Eh? Um, the, okay. the, the, if 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 you fall within a an, a good profile, I mean, we can offer you uh, a fantastic rate. And remember, yeah. we're looking at twenty different insurers at the same time. So, oh. it, 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 and it and it's also linked to our profitability with those insurers. 
if, uh, if, if one I thing can... that I'm thinking about now, Carl, is um, something that I hear a lot out there is uh, specifically on the medical aid as well, but on the short term insurance is where people say, you know what, I'm still on my dad's policy. It's still beneficial for me. But I just thought about it now when you said uh, getting a track record um, and, and so forth. Is it maybe not advisable for younger individuals to start their own short term insurance policy? so that they can have their own track record and see that they are not claiming? Uh, does that help them? It's very important. The fact that, uh, that you still sit on your dad's policy means that that vehicle is still in his name. Because if it's not in his name, it, it, if it's in, 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 in the, the, the individual's name, um, then it's not an insured risk. Uh, in, and, uh, you know, then you know, with any claim, they would, would repudiate that claim. Yeah, you know, he's not he's not the, the the actual owner of that vehicle. You know, okay. But if it's still on his dad's name, yeah, you, you know, it could be on on that policy. But yes, the the sooner the better. You build up uh, the 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 history, and also a relationship with the insurer. I mean, we've seen many of our claims that we. We, uh, which weren't even claims, but I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was because of the relationship that we all the client had with the insure insurance company or us that we actually got those claims paid, uh, which I don't think uh, when you sit with one insurer or a direct insurer, you wouldn't have that. Uh, and, and, you know, that makes quite a large difference. Yeah, and I think part of the relationship also is it's the same with what I have with my clients is eventually you as, as Carl and then KIS Insurance starts knowing your clients as well, where you know what type of questions to ask them, uh, maybe to ensure certain things that they haven't even thought about. Uh, and Absolutely. like I said, I love the fact that at claim stage, uh, specifically in our personal capacity, I can literally pick up the phone and I can phone you directly or I can phone Salumi and yeah. I can speak to someone directly, not holding on and knowing exactly what's happening within our situation. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, at, at, at claim stage, you know, we assist the client with uh, completing the claim. Many claims are not being paid as a result of uh, claim forms that have been filled in incomplete, incomplete, completely, or uh, or they've made errors, or they uh, they actually, you know, uh, um, you know, so, so you know that we also assist a lot with. Okay, and and another thing that I want to mention there as well is, is why. Um, it's important to, to partner up with an independent because Carl and his team uh, will have certain agreements with certain companies where they actually have the power, and Carl, please correct me if I'm wrong, but where, where he and his team actually has the power to, to give discount on certain things, or if you've got a large book with a certain insurer, uh, they allow you better rates than what I as an individual on my own might get. Absolutely, that's that's very important. And that's the main thing about short-term insurance. You know that many people might ask, what, "How is it possible for a smaller broker to offer lower ra uh, rates on, on 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 specific items than uh, large brokers?" And it's all about the uh, profitability of the book that we run. Now, our profitability. Uh, or our profile rate runs at a 35 percent and the um, and the, the 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 industry norm is about 68 percent so between the 35 and the 68 percent we have room to play with either the premiums or the volume or the um, uh, you know the the, the risk um, mm. so yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, it's, it's all about the profitability of our book uh, with certain insurers. Yeah, so, so therefore, I actually want to challenge everyone out there listening to this and watching later. 
uh, is to take your existing policy, uh, which you might have through a specific company uh, and not working through a broker, and actually go and test it. And I think you, you're going to be uh, surprised um, and happy to see that, that the individual who can actually quote at different companies um, will be able to get you a lower premium. Um, all right. Carl, um, from my side, I would really like to thank you. Is there anything last that you would want to add from your side? Uh, thanks, uh, Wilco, and thanks to all your uh, clients. Um, it was a, a real honor to speak to you guys this morning. Um, I, I just think that, uh, you know, building up uh, a good relationship with your broker and and your insurer is critically important and uh, and it and it takes you takes takes you a long way so yeah, yeah start today awesome stuff Carl thank you very much once again you must have a lovely day uh, we'll be in touch thanks for, Bye -bye. thanks for that keep well all right so there you have it uh, short term insurance in a nutshell with uh, Karen insurance. Uh, the director, Carl Karen, uh, speaking to us there. So please, guys, go onto their website, uh, go and have a look, uh, and then uh, decide for yourself um, if you would rather just be focusing on premium or if you're going to sit down and have some decent advice and look at all the uh, different aspects uh, that you need to have a look at uh, to make sure that your policy is 100% in place. Like I said in the beginning, uh, we will be doing this once a month going forward. Uh, so if there's any specific topics that you would want me to focus on, please send it through and we will gladly get experts in or myself and we will chat about that. Um, as we're going into level three and we're opening up a little bit more, please, everyone out there, respect the rules, stay in line um, and stay safe. It's important that we all work together so that we can get the economy up and running again. Until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye.